I want to thank you for joining me once again out here in the old dusty workshop. I have quite an exciting project to announce today. I have been given the opportunity from an amazing customer to make a heron marked blade, uh, which if you don't know what it is, um, I am a big Wheel of Time nerd, and uh, I'm going to give you just a little bit of a, a backstory here. You can check out more on your own if you wish. Uh, but The Wheel of Time is, uh, was originally a book series by Robert Jordan. Um, I think there's, I might be incorrect here, but I think there's 14 books. It's a very long series. It is, as one would guess, an epic fantasy series. Um, so it has a lot of swords, a lot of really cool blades. And the characters are especially vibrant, which I really love about the series. Um, now, a heron marked blade is a sword is marked with a heron, either on the blade itself or sometimes on the handle. And a heron marked blade is the blade that's most commonly used by blade masters, uh, which are people who have, you know, quote unquote, mastered the sword. Generally that takes many, many, many years in this, you know, the Wheel of Time universe. So there are some really incredible, uh, you know, swords, sword fights, descriptions of swords um, that are heron marked blades. A lot of them wielded by blade masters. Some of them not wielded by blade masters. I am very excited to get started on this project. I just wanted to give you guys a brief kind of explanation around what a heron marked blade is. If you're interested, the Wheel of Time is being turned into a television series. Um, it's actually it's on Amazon Prime. It will be, so it's not quite television, but it's being turned into a series, and uh, the sword that they are using in, or one of the swords that they're using in the Amazon Wheel of Time series is very similar to a katana, uh, which based on the description in the books, I can definitely see that being, you know, a type of heron marked blade as well. So I think that that is super cool. I'm really excited to see what they do with that series on Amazon Prime. So this is going to be my rendition of a heron marked blade. It's going to be a little bit more European style. And I am really excited to get uh, forging on this. I'm going to start by forging out the tang, and then I will forge in the tip. And uh, it's going to be a really, really cool build. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this forge lit, and we'll start hitting some steel.
so I have the tang all forged here. Got that little bit of a little bit of bend in it. And I think that that will work very well. I might uh, might lessen the bend a little bit when we get further, but for right now that looks perfect. So now I'm going to forge in the tip and uh, I'm going to get a little bit of curvature going in the blade and uh, I'm going to forge in a little bit of the harpoon um, clip that it'll have up here. So, let's get this back in the forge and uh, draw that tip out.
Now that I have the majority of the forging down, I'm going to take this over to the grinder, get a rough profile going. I'm going to grind in a little bit of curvature in the blade, um, and then after that if I need to adjust the curvature at all, I'll do it in the forge. But the majority of our forging is complete. And I really like that. Get it ground down a little bit. I like how that looks. It's time to uh, rough grind it, get it ready for heat treat. So I'm going to hop on the grinder here and I'm going to take a whole lot of weight off of this sword, get a good distal taper going, and, uh, and then I will rough grind in the fullers along the spine here on each side. Then it'll be time to uh, quench this beast. So now that I got most of the scale off, I am going to swap over to the small wheel and I'm going to grind in the fullers. And then after that, I am going to finish getting the distal taper ground in here. And uh, I'll do that with a fresher belt. This one's kind of worn, uh, but it's real good for just taking scale off because scale likes to eat abrasives. So best to use a somewhat worn belt for that. Anyway. I am gonna actually jump over to the horizontal grinder and just smooth out this top part here just so I get a good, uh, better view of how my fuller's going. And uh, we'll get that fuller all ground in.
All right, so after grinding with a fuller, I found a little bit of wiggle in the blade. It was a little bit of crookedness in here. So I just took it over to the forge and straightened it out. Um, this layer of scale isn't thick at all. Um, but now, I'm going to go ahead and grind the main bevel and get uh, the rest of the distal taper ground in, at least the preheat treat distal taper. Rough grinding completed on the sword. I think that it just looks incredible. And that fuller turned out really nice. The distal taper is good. It is a very very lively sword for being, you know, just under a 36 inch blade. It's very cool. It, it handles really well and I cannot wait to feel it with an actual, you know, guard and handle and pommel on it. It's going to be really, really cool. That is where I'm going to end this first episode. In the next episode I will be forging the guard and the pommel and I will be getting the blade heat treated. So I want to thank you for watching this episode of Let's Make a Sword. I cannot wait to catch you guys in the next one. And the best way to help out the channel right now is just to like and subscribe. Uh, maybe even share this video. You can click that share button. That button really, really helps to improve the algorithms. I am so incredibly grateful that I get to build awesome projects like this out here in the old Dusty Workshop. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will catch you on the next episode.